what I think about Love Island mm. at least uh, and having caused yet another storm this week. The show uh, never fails to draw eyes. Ofcom received almost 25,000 complaints uh, over Friday night's episode of Love Island in which two contestants had an explosive argument following um, a challenge. This mm. challenge was as I mentioned earlier in my monologue uh, Casa Amor it's called where uh, the boys and the girls who are together they get separated uh, the boys get you know a whole host of new girls to, uh, I was going to say, play with. It's a meat with. market, isn't it? It's to an mingle absolute with, meat market. To mingle with. And then what happened was the producers then took, you know, secrets now, although it's not secret, it's on national TV, but they took it's snaps something. of the of the, um, of the the boys kissing the girls, right. and then they sent those snaps to the girls, and of course this completely erupted. Of course they did, because that's how reality yeah. TV works. So I don't understand when these boys go to the villa or whatever they do, right? They go, oh, it's all right, don't worry, despite the fact that I'm nat on national television and there's, there's cameras everywhere, and I know that all the other girls are in the other villa and I've seen every single series of Love Island before during which they've always secretly taken the photos and then yeah. breathlessly run along to my former missus and told her what I've been up to. I'll oh, get away with it this time. It's absolute lunacy, isn't it? But anyway, viewers of the ITV2 reality show have been increasingly churning to the media regulator to say that they feel uncomfortable about something that they've seen on screen. Accusations of gaslighting, abuse and emotional manipulation are frequently thrown around. But with hours of content being boiled down to just an hour a night, how can you really know what's going on behind the scenes when you've never been in the villa? Apparently, just quickly as well, I spoke to someone who said that they've been into the you know, part of the crew. Not on this series, I must say. And apparently those bedrooms, they absolutely stink because it's all full of well, actually... Well, they would do, wouldn't they? And, that... and all this... Oh, just, just, yeah. Oh, I thought you meant... Oh, OK. No, no. wow. Um... OK, well, in today's <laughs> controversy, this is our big feature that we do every single day, today's controversy, we're asking whether or not Love Island is a good or bad thing for society. And Ty and Lexi Carson is a former Love Island contestant from season three, which aired in 2017. What's your thoughts on the latest controversy of the show? Is Love Island overall actually a good or a bad thing for society? Hello, thank you so much for having me. Um, I think that is quite a large statement to say that it could be bad for society. At the end of the day, the way I see it is there is a cash prize at the end of this program. So it is a game show and it, it's down to you whether you take it seriously. It's down to you whether you want to watch it. My dad watches Wheelie Dealers. I would never choose to watch that program in my life. And you can just turn it over. It's a channel on the television. It's a game show. So to say it's bad for society, I think it's a really big statement to make. And personally, I don't think it is bad. There are a lot of people that do get enjoyment out of watching it and they can choose to watch the show. People that hate it, I think most people that do hate Love Island still love to speak about it. I don't know what it is about Love Island. I just think it's Love Island fever. People secretly love it. It's kind of like Marmite, I think. One of the biggest reality shows in the it's in history, really, compared to like Big Brother and stuff like that. Obviously, Big Brother's had its own time now. Um, and I think Love Island's time will come. But at the moment, it seems to, seems to be doing rather well. Yeah, look, I've got to be honest with you, this is purely anecdotal evidence, but it is evidence nonetheless, which I am seeing now more and more and more very young women, in some cases, I'm sure they're still teenagers, with things like lip fillers, with things like boob jobs, with, frankly, clearly body confidence issues as well. I don't know if the same necessarily translates to blokes, I think purely because a lot of the plastic surgeries that men have, or, or uh, body enhancements, I spoke you say, that men have are perhaps less intrusive. I've got, a, I've got a feeling this is coming a lot from Love Island, because this is being beamed into your front room every day, this is what you're supposed to look like, this is what's attractive, and I think that's quite damaging. To be honest with you, there are some contestants that do have lip fillers, that do have some plastic surgery, but then you've got other contestants, I think the contestant Priya that's just gone, out, gone in is a complete natural beauty, so it's the same as in what? everyday she's life. She's one out of yeah. many, isn't she? She is one out of many. I think, skinny, that, I think, I think there's know? three of them or something that don't have... And Millie a, a as well. Job. Millie is absolutely stunning. I don't think uh, Millie's yeah. got any work. But it is a majority of them that have these, isn't it, these mm. uh, procedures, whether it's lip fillers. I mean, I don't know, Chloe uh, doesn't probably have lip fillers and Kaz doesn't have... But I, I literally have to think hard to think of who doesn't actually have lip fillers and who doesn't have boob jobs, mm. which says a lot. I think it's just... People say, don't they, previous years of Love Island, as the years go on, every year we kind of see clones of previous contestants and you will see a lot of posts of people saying... This year's contestant looks like that last year's contestant. But I think you have to have a certain look to go on the show. 
Um, people say we'd, we'd look, like to see large women on there or dad bods on there. But mm -hmm. when you do, I mean, the year that I went on, I was like a size 10, didn't go to the gym, was probably one of the most unfit girls on there. And I was, I, I was exposed to a lot of nasty trolling when I came mm -hmm. off the show. Mm -hmm. So I think if they put in a larger woman, she, you're opening up her to a lot of trolling and just yeah. bad negativity that I think you just, You've got to have that strong mental headspace when you come off the show to be able to handle it as well. I think that's a really interesting point, actually, because part of me wonders, are we feeding the beast here? Because actually, with respect, if you did end up with a show, I think this is wrong, by the way, but if you did end up with a show that was full of larger women, you know, someone who, who looks like me on there. Phil my, Mitchell. I've got a body like oh. a drop lasagna, you know, and you think, if I went on there, right, <laughs> I'm not being funny, but the viewing figures would plummet. It'd be a very different show. I'd never get off the sunbed. I'd never do any of the trials. I'd just be there just constantly cooking in the kitchen, all this kind of stuff. So actually, the audience don't want it. The audience do want to sit there and watch beautiful people essentially just getting with each other, don't they? Exactly. And like a lot of guys do tune in because you've got girls walking around in their bikinis every single yeah. day. A lot of, it's amazing how many dads Island. watch it, isn't it? Oh, my daughter's into Love Island, so I just sit <laughs> through it all the time. Yeah, all right, Gary. Yeah, when I was in Love Island, <laughs> my dad refused to watch it. He wanted to get a flight out there to go and bring me back because my mum didn't actually tell him until the night I was going on the television. The whole family didn't have any idea. So, yeah, it was a big shock. Uh, and what do you think it... Because uh, um, I did a li little monologue earlier and I raised this point about what it, the view it gives to young people about what relationships are like. Because mm. some of the people on there have actually never been uh, in a relationship. Um, so this will sort of, I suppose, be their first experience of a, a relationship. And it's very manufactured and it's clearly... Um, you know, the, in, in no situation will you ever be having a relationship um, in those circumstances. And, of course, the producers, they try and um, sort of make the girls jealous because it's good telly. They sent those pictures of their boyfriends kissing other girls to make them upset. Mm -hmm. And I'm quite uncomfortable uh, with you know kind of the audience which includes me enjoying that almost you watch it every night it is. anyway go on yeah well <laughs> it is and that's what we look for as an audience we want the drama and i think so many weeks up until obviously last week there was no drama um and i think that postcard obviously stirred the pot massively and you are playing with people's emotion but talking about people that have gone in there and comparing it to real life relationships I really don't think you can because you're literally in an environment, quite a small environment with people that you don't know. And it is extremely mm. intense. If you've not been in the villa, you don't quite understand just how intense it is. I went home and had like two boyfriends and to go in there as an only child to be thrown in, like sleeping next to 12 of the people that all snore, it, mm. is, it completely throws you off and you just you feel like you're in an outer space kind of yeah. thing that's going on you're not really aware of like the real world at all there's no phone no nothing so toby's gone in there i think toby said he'd never had a girlfriend no. and i think he's been having the most action in there out of everyone he's been trying out Jeez. all the girls it's it's an awakening for him, his isn't friends it? would probably turn around and say no like you can't keep just jumping from one yeah. to the other but then again in life you see someone and if you don't like them mm. you break it off and then you go on to seeing someone else so in a way it kind of does show that sort of real life dynamic mm. as well but in a very strange way yeah we've had andy get in touch on the emails gbviews at gbnews.uk and what he's saying is that he's worried about the sexualization for younger people you know people who maybe think now actually what love island is helping to do is is normalize promiscuity normalize um you know casual sex as it were do you think there's any truth in that just for andy there asking us on the emails um, I think last night's programme, I found it rather uncomfortable to watch, um, whether it normalises it or not. And why I'm was not that? Sure. Why did you find yeah, it on. uncomfortable? I, 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 I think I know what you're talking about, but tell yeah. our viewers. I haven't got any idea because I was not watching. Um, well, for one, I was sat with my mum, so we were watching it together. Um, and I just thought the way they did it, I thought poor Pri has just gone in there. Um, and like there's four people kind of going at it together. Um, okay. I think maybe it would have been better. I feel more comfortable when they're in the hideaway, when they're out there in their own room, on their own. But when they were just all kind of lined up next to one another, it was kind of like just watching some sort of weird competition for <laughs> fondling under the duvet, <laughs> if I, I must say yeah. so. But um, yeah. it was wow. a bit weird. I don't think they ever aired anything like that before. Yeah. So 
it just was very a new quickly, experience. Just very quickly on, on that very mm. issue there. I think a lot of people, especially maybe earlier on in reality television series, didn't necessarily understand the fact that when they have sex on TV, the impact that that can have when they go forward. Everyone has seen that. Your family's probably seen it, which is the yeah, thing that really stops weird, me going on any of these things anyway, that and the aforementioned body. But, however, I'm just wondering, actually, is that something that the producers should do more to tell you about? Look, if you have sex on telly, we will put it out there, and that's going to be a massive issue for you going forward. I think I thought there was something where obviously you have to be they won't show anything if you're on top of the sheets because they obviously can't show mm. I don't know I'm oh, not yeah, too sure we'll I mean know. I we'll never what's going on got that far and would never get that far in there and if I, I ever do speak to anyone that is going on the show I always say don't do anything because you will re it's I think it's just best not to like you should be able to wait until you get out it's seven weeks and some people aren't even in there for that that long and it can tarnish your career depending on what you want mm. to go into especially if it's more profession it's just best not to and if you can't wait right. then you've got issues that's what i think Ty, thank you so so much Ty and Lexi carsten there love island contestant i thought some wise words there that was our controversy of course the big controversy question mm. was whether or I not think love seven island weeks is quite ambitious to tell them to wait that long welcome to the gb news youtube channel you can watch us live 24 hours a day catch up on your favorite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.